Hello, I'm Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Monday, October 21st, 2024. Today I'm doing some fact-checking on gender-affirming surgeries for prisoners. Now, I live in a key battleground state, and I have seen countless election ads, including one that claims Vice President Harris supports taxpayer-funded transgender surgeries for inmates. So I want to break this down with some facts. Now, in the federal prison system, the Federal Bureau of Prisons updated its guidelines in 2016, allowing hormone therapy and, in rare cases, surgery. According to a New York Times article, only two inmates in federal prison have ever received gender-affirming surgery. Trans inmates mostly receive hormonal therapy. But gender-affirming surgeries are extremely rare in federal prisons. The U.S. courts have ruled that denying medically necessary care, including gender-affirming surgery, could violate the Eighth Amendment, which protects inmates against cruel and unusual punishment. But this is a complicated issue. Now, in the state prisons, the policies vary. There are roughly 1.1 million people in state prisons, and an estimated 5,000 of these are transgender. Folks, that's less than 0.5% in U.S. state prisoners are transgender. Now, some states like California and Illinois allow gender-affirming surgery on inmates, although I couldn't get any numbers. Uh, Other states are more restrictive. So now I want to switch over to the general population, meaning I'm sharing some facts that are not specific to people in prison. So the transgender population only makes up 0.5% of the adult U.S. population and 1% of teens in this country between the ages of 14 and 17 years of age. It's a small population. So who gets gender affirming surgery? Well, surgery is typically performed on people between the ages of 19 to 30 because in most states, the consent age for gender affirming surgery is 18 years old, meaning you have to be 18 or older to even get these surgeries. Now, breast uh, and chest surgeries are most common. Now, when it comes to discrimination and harassment, transgender people face a lot of this. And in this election season, we are certainly seeing politicians who are seeking political office, who are sowing disinformation about LGBTQ plus people's rights, just to score political points with their voter base. The bottom line, folks, is this claim that taxpayer funded gender affirming surgery for prisoners is widespread. That's misleading. Data shows that it's very rare. But you know what isn't rare? The fact that millions of millions of dollars are being spent on these anti-trans messaging ads. And all this is really doing, in my opinion, is fueling transphobia, hate, and bigotry. And I hope that you won't fall for it. And I also am asking you to please share this message. Share it with your friends. Share it with your coworkers and family so we can set the record straight. That's my message today. As always, take care and be well.